Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to today's Tech Tuesday. My name is Vanessa, and I am an ITS communication specialist, and I'm going to be talking to you about Qualtrics today. Actually, let me pull that up on my screen. If a few of you wouldn't mind giving a thumbs up that you can see my PowerPoint presentation okay, or just putting in the chat that everything looks okay on your end. Perfect. Thank you, Doug. And I see a couple other people did that. I appreciate it. So thank you for joining us to talk about Qualtrics today. This is actually going to be part of a two-part series. So part one today is the basics of survey creation. So if you're new to Qualtrics or if you have played around with before, but you need a little bit more guidance, this is the perfect start for you. We're going to be talking about just putting questions in a survey, launching it out to whoever you need to send it to, and then how to get the results of that survey. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Next week, I want to talk about one of the advanced features that I get a lot of questions about, which is how to add scoring to Qualtrics surveys. So if you're interested in what you hear about today and want to learn more, I'll be sending a follow-up email after this session with a link to this, uh, this event's recording that you can refer back to, helpful links about how to create surveys that you can also refer back to, and also the sign up for next week's session about how to add the scoring feature to your surveys if you want to learn more. Also, I am expecting quite a few people on today, so I do have everybody's mics muted, but if you have any questions at any point throughout today's session, feel free to just post it in the chat. I'm going to be stopping periodically to hopefully answer all of your questions. And again, when I send you that follow-up survey, you can, or follow-up email rather, you can always just email me back if you've thought of something after the session's over. So feel free to ask questions at any point. So let's get started about Qualtrics. So what is it? So Qualtrics is just one of the survey tools that we offer at Wild Cornell. We do have a few, and I'm going to be talking about two of them a bit today. Qualtrics and RedCap, because we do get questions about when I should use one over the other. So hopefully I can provide a little bit of guidance today about which is the better tool for whatever scenario you have. But Qualtrics is a great tool. I'm in it quite a bit because it's just so easy to use. I think you'll find that as you start using Qualtrics, you'll see that the interface is pretty intuitive. It's really easy to just create a survey and throw it out there. And there are some great analytics tools that Qualtrics has included in your account to give you like a basic understanding of how people are responding and kind of pull trending information from that. It's a pretty robust tool. Our account, our institutional account includes a lot of features. So I know some people like to use free tools like SurveyMonkey, for example, and not to talk bad about SurveyMonkey, but because we have an institutional license, you'll get so many other features that aren't available in a free tool like SurveyMonkey. So I highly recommend if you've been making surveys in, in a tool like SurveyMonkey to try out Qualtrics just to see what's available. You might be surprised. There are other cool features like email triggers that you can manage how your surveys are sent out to whatever recipient pool that you've got. You can reuse almost every piece of your survey. So if you need to send out a survey quarterly or a few times a year and you don't want to have to reinvent the wheel every time, you don't have to. You can just pull things from surveys that you've created in the past or even surveys that other people have created that they've shared with you. So you don't always have to start right from the beginning. And I think one of the best things about Qualtrics is that there's no cost to departments. You can actually just start using it without making a request to ITS. I'm going to show you how to just log in with your seaweed and password. And if you even want to follow along while I'm demonstrating today, feel free. So I did mention RedCap. So we have Qualtrics and RedCap, and we get a lot of questions about which one I should use. So hopefully this gives you a little bit of guidance. So both of these survey tools are compliant with privacy and security regulations. So if you need to collect PHI, for example, you can use Qualtrics and you can use RedCap. And they both offer a lot of different question types and distribution methods. So whether you need to use multiple choice or a matrix question, things like that, both of these tools are great. But that being said, things that Qualtrics has that RedCap doesn't necessarily have or do quite as well, Qualtrics is a much more modern interface. It's much easier to put together a survey. 
And it looks a lot cleaner and easy to use and streamline on the end user perspective. So that's something that if, if that's important to you, Qualtrics might be the way to go. It's also ideal for a lot of business use cases that we have. So anything from like a satisfaction survey, quizzes, you know, you just, you're having an office party and want people to respond and, and get an RSVP. Qualtrics is a great tool to use. And there's no fee to create any surveys. And that's not to say that REDCap always has fees. It's actually free to use for research projects, but it is subject to fees if you need additional support from our team. So what REDCap has that Qualtrics lacks in is it's much easier to export data to statistical software. There is an option to export raw data from Qualtrics for SPSS formatting, for example, but REDCap does this a little better. So that's something you know, that if it's important to you for a research project, you may want to consider using REDCap instead. It's also optimal for longitudinal surveys, and it includes a database management feature. So if those are things you really need for a research project, REDCap is probably the better choice. That being said, if you still have questions, you're not sure which one to use over the other, we have an amazing team called the Architecture for Research Computing and Health. You can always shoot them a quick email at arch-support at med.cornell.edu, and someone will be happy to answer and guide you in the right direction for whatever tool you want to use. Uh, so now, let's say you've decided to use Qualtrics and you're getting ready to do your survey. What do you do? Really easy. All you're going to do is go to wowcornell.qualtrics.com, and you're going to be taken to a very you know, familiar site where you just log in with your seaweed and password, and that's it. You'll be in your Qualtrics account and you can start making surveys, which is what I'm going to do in just a minute. That being said, this happens all the time. We get a lot of people who come to these demonstrations and they're eager to use Qualtrics, but they don't get to quite use it right away or they don't have a use case for it immediately. So they forget everything. And that's totally fine. So again, I am recording this survey, I, or this session rather, I will send you a copy of it so you can go back and refer to it. Uh, but also Qualtrics has a really amazing support site at qualtrics.com slash support. I use it myself to look up all kinds of different scenarios of ways that I want to create my survey. And it's, it's honestly never let me down. It has not only a support site, but a forum where other people ask questions and Qualtrics experts come in and and offer some solutions to help you out. So really recommend that support site, it's amazing. But if you're having an issue where you can't log into your account, that's more of a technical problem and you need to contact our service desk. So if you can't log in, contact the service desk. If you just have questions about creating your survey and need a little help, the Qualtrics support site is amazing. And we actually, our license includes uh, the Qualtrics service chat. So you can always reach out to their support team if you have questions about putting your, together your survey. So let me just sign out of this really fast out of this PowerPoint presentation. And we're going to move over into Qualtrics. Let me just see really fast if I had any questions. Oh, from Megan, RedCap may be better if the study is using e-consent too. Thank you, Megan, for bringing that up. That's a very important point. Uh, give me one second, guys, to just pull up my Qualtrics account. All righty. Can everybody see my Qualtrics dashboard here? Thumbs up or anything? Or in the chat is appreciated. Okay, I see a thumbs up. Perfect. All right, I'm glad you guys can see it. So let me get started. So once you sign in to wildcornell.qualtrics.com with your student and password, you're taken to this dashboard. And if you never used Qualtrics before, your dashboard is going to look a lot different than mine. I have I have a lot of surveys. Let's just put it that way. Um, but once you start creating surveys, you're going to see a lot of little widgets on your dashboard. I've got notifications at the top for people who've shared surveys with me, just letting me know, hey, you might want to take a look at this. There are little dashboards here at the bottom showing you activity for the most recent surveys or starred surveys, the ones that you marked as very important that you might want to keep track of. And on the left-hand side are the most recent surveys 
that I have been fiddling around with or created that I can easily access, okay? But if I need to find any survey that I've ever done, all I need to do is I can search for it here with a keyword in this field, or I can just hit this see all projects link right here. And it's gonna take me to every survey I've ever done, which is apparently 257 at this point. That's a lot, okay. But if I wanna easily search through there, I can create new folders to kind of manage things a little easier, which I should probably be doing in this case. Or I can use this search bar here. Um, I'm gonna search through the word SmartFest since I've done a lot of surveys for that event. And you can see here, all of those surveys having to do with that keyword populate here. So it's really easy to find anything that you have created in Qualtrics within your dashboard and navigate through it. If you need to go back to the main dashboard, all you have to do is click on the left-hand side, that XM logo, and you're taken right back to the beginning when you log in. So today we're just going to talk about basics, how to create a basic survey. So let's get started. There's a big blue button on the bottom left that says create a new project that I'm hovering around, and that's what I'm going to click. So there's going to be a lot of templates that Qualtrics recommends that you can start off with, and you're free to absolutely explore some of these options. But I like to show people how to create a survey from scratch. I think it's actually the best way to learn how to use all the features that are available in Qualtrics, especially for a beginner, at least to show you where they are. So we're going to start from scratch, and we're just going to hit this button that says survey. And Qualtrics gives you a little bit of a description of what that template is best for. This is completely blank. So we're starting from scratch and we're just gonna hit get started. So the first thing you need to do is name your survey. We're gonna have a very hard hitting research uh, study here. It's more of a survey cat adoption. And I'm just gonna date it so that I remember this one that I created. So you can assign it to a folder if you need to. I'm just going to put it in my Tech Tuesday samples. And then how do you want to start your survey? So in this case, for, for these purposes of learning, we're going to start completely blank survey, okay? There are options, though, that, you know, you might be working with a colleague at another institution who also uses Qualtrics, and they can send you a QSF file, which is a special file type of Qualtrics survey. So if they send you that, you can also import it into your own account. Um, you can copy a survey from another one that you've done in the past or use a survey from your library. These are kind of more advanced options. If you're new to Qualtrics, you may not need to do this right just, just yet. So we're going to do create a blank survey project and hit create project. So Qualtrics is going to think for a second and then give you a new kind of dashboard to work from. This is the survey creation view where you're going to just start building your survey. So in the middle here is where you're going to put all of your questions. And on the left hand side, this navigation pane changes depending on what question type you ultimately select to use while you're creating your survey. So I personally like to start surveys with a description of what it is, you know, people are are doing with this survey. Like what kind of information are they giving? So by default, Qualtrics will, anytime you add a new question, it's going to give you a multiple choice, but you're not beholden to that. You can change it any way you like. So I want a descriptive question. It's not really a question, but they call it a question type. I want a, des a descriptive question type here, and I've got a multiple choice. So in order to change it, I'm just making sure that it's selected, it's highlighted in blue, and I'm gonna move over to question type right here. And there's a drop down that shows me all the types of questions that come with my Qualtrics account. And there's a ton. And if I hover over any of them, Qualtrics gives me a little bit of a visual preview of what that question type looks like and what it does. And in this case, all I want is text. I just want to have a little disclaimer of what this survey is about. So that's what I'm gonna select. And you'll see that the question now changes so that I can just put whatever I want in this little box. So at the top here, I'm just gonna click to start typing and I'm gonna do thanks for your interest in adopting one of our cats. 
please submit your information to be considered. And hopefully I typed that all without mistakes. Yeah, I think so. So when you're done typing out whatever it is in this text box, all you have to do is click outside of it and you're done. And you don't have to continually save your survey. You'll see right here, it says saved at 12.15 p.m. Qualtrics auto saves continuously while you're creating your survey, which is quite nice. So you don't really have to worry about, oh, I built this survey and I logged out and I didn't save anything. Qualtrics is always going to be saving your work as you're creating your survey. One other thing about adding text into your Qualtrics survey, when I click on it, you'll also see that there's an option for a rich text editor. Let me click on that really quick. This format now, this view kind of changes to something you might be more familiar with. You can format your text very similar to Word and make things bold, for example, or change the font size formatting. You can add photos. If you need to, you can add tables, bullets. There's a ton here that you can do. Again, very similar if you formatted text in Word. So any text that you have in Qualtrics, you can format it any way you need to. Just look for that when you click on it, the rich content editor tab. And you can also remove formatting if you need to and change your mind after the fact. So we have our description, great. Let's start adding questions. So when you wanna add a new question, all you have to do is add new question right here in the corner. And it's gonna give you an option to pick which one you want next. In this case, I think I'm gonna do a text entry. I want to gather people, actually, wait, I changed my mind. Let me delete that. So you can click that those three dots and hit delete. I actually wanted a form field question. There we go. And this is because I want to pull information like uh, the person's name, their email address, things like that, so that I actually know who's wanting to adopt these cats that I have uh, up for adoption. So again, I'm going to click to write my question, which is please submit the following information. All right, and just click out of there. And by default, I have three choices, but I can change this however I need to. Right now, I want the person's full name. I want their email address. And I want their phone number. Perfect. All right. So these fields are looking rather tiny. Maybe somebody filling this out would feel like they don't have a lot of space to type out their full name. That's fine. You just have to click and drag in the corner and you can make these fields pretty large. And I'm going to do it to all of them so there's a little bit of consistency. If there was another field that I wanted that I felt like adding more information, let's say their, their actual physical address, I can just hit enter and I get another form field that appears. You can also change the form field right here on the left-hand side. So right now I've got four. I can subtract one if I wanted. I also could have hit delete so that I could have gotten rid of that last form field. But you can change formula, form field numbers just by hitting enter or return on your keyboard to add more very easily or just hit delete and you're good to go. And you can do it on the left-hand side. So let me get rid of that again. All right. So I've got a full name email address, and phone number. If you want to make sure that the information you're getting is valid, meaning somebody's not just going to put whatever in the email address field that's not actually an email address, same thing with phone number, you can add validation to these types of questions. So I'm going to hit the click to edit validation link right here. And this is going to slightly change. So I've got an email address and it tells me the text field size, but you'll notice now that there's a field here that says validation. And if I click on this drop down, you can see that I can add validation if I wanted to. So in this case, I'm asking for an email address and I wanna make sure that this person actually gives me a valid email address. So I can just select that. And if a person fills out this form, if they do not include a valid email address, in their survey responses, then Qualtrics just won't let them submit it. It's gonna ask them, please include a valid email address. Same thing with phone number. Let's do a phone number and you can include different regions. Right now we've got US, Canada, and a couple other countries here. Um, we'll stick to the US to make it easier in this case for adoption. Um, but you'll notice too with the validation, there's lots of other things 
that you can validate, uh, postal codes, dates. I think numerical value is very handy for things like research studies where you need somebody to input an actual number. You don't want them to like type out a number, like who knows how people will fill these out. So you can actually force them to either do a numerical value or even a text value. So these are really great options to kind of customize your survey to make sure you're getting the data you actually want. And when you're done doing validation, you can go back to preview mode and you'll see these little stars here next to these questions. And the, the UN user is not going to see that when they fill up the survey. It's more of a note to you that you've added validation to this particular part of the question. All right. So let's move on and add another question. I'm going to do multiple choice this time. And I'm not going to go through all of these question types today. We don't have a, a, the whole, you know, a lot of time to do that. But I will go through at least the most common ones. So here's a multiple choice one. And we're going to ask, do you currently have any pets in your home? I'll click out of that. And one thing you're going to notice, as I click out of this question, Qualtrics kind of starts thinking of what the answers could possibly be. So it knows that it's a, a yes or no question. Um, I don't think I actually need this many options. I just need yes or no. So you can start getting rid of some of the options here and I've got yes or no, and that's perfectly fine. And you may have noticed as I'm creating different question types, I'm getting different options here of what I can change about my survey to customize it to my liking. Uh, so in this case, I'm going to have a follow-up question to this. I'm going to ask another multiple choice, and it's going to be, whoop, what kind of pets do you currently have? Please select all that. Why? Perfect. So I've got a few options here. Dog, cat bird, and other, please specify. All right. So this is a case that comes up a lot that people have questions about. So I've got this question here. Do you have any pets in your home? And if they answer yes, I would like them to answer this follow-up question of what kind of pets they currently have. But if they answer no, this question is kind of pointless for them, right? I mean, they don't have any pets. Why do they need to answer it? So this is where logic comes in and Qualtrics has a lot of uh, cool ways that you can add logic to your survey. So in this left-hand sidebar, if you scroll down to the bottom, you'll see that there are options to add display logic and skip logic. So in this case, I want question five to display if somebody answers yes to question four. So with question five selected, I'm gonna do display logic. And now I'm going to have to input the parameters of when question five actually appears on that person's screen. So display this question only if the following condition is met. So if question four, do you currently have pets in your home? If the answer is yes, then question five is going to appear. So I'm going to hit. Oh, hold on. Why don't I let me save that one second? Display logic. Come on. Huh, that is funny because it's saying that I have a third option there when I know I don't. Let's do this again really quick. All right, let's try that one more time. All right, there we go. That's working now. So a little glitch there, but thank you for your patience while I figure that out. So the logic is if they answer yes to question four, this question five is gonna display on screen and I'm gonna hit save. So now you're gonna see a little note for question five that just informs you as a creator, not the person taking the survey, that there is logic associated with this question. Another thing too, is that we've asked the person to select all of the pets that apply, all the pets that are living with them in their home. But currently they can only pick one of these because we have the radio button option. So if I want to change this again, on the left-hand sidebar, that's what's going to help me customize these questions to my liking. And in this case, I want to allow multiple answers. So if I click that, 
you're going to see that now these have all changed to check marks. And so people are allowed to select more than one. Um, and even though the check mark kind of visually indicates you can select more than one option, I do like to put those instructions clearly in the question so people do know. With this case here, where I have other, and I want the person to specify the actual pet they have in their house, I'm going to click on this option here, and you'll see a drop down icon right there. And if I click on it, you're going to see that there is an option to allow for a text entry, which is what I want. If somebody has, you know, a chinchilla, you know, they can now add it in this little field right here. And when I pull up the results, I'll be able to see exactly what, you, you know, animal they have in their home. So I'm going to add one new question, another multiple choice. I'm going to ask which cat are you interested in adopting? Oops. And we have three cats right now. And I didn't name these cats. These are their actual names. Princess Monster Truck. Okay. So one of the really cool things about Qualtrics is that you can add images to a lot of your answers. So in this case, I want to add pictures of these cats so that people are enticed to adopt them. So I'm just going to select one of my answers and hit the drop down. And you're going to see that there's an option to insert graphic. And this is going to pull up my image library. So I've used a lot of images in the past in my surveys. And anything that I've used is automatically saved into my library, which is really nice because I have had instances where I needed to reuse something again, and I didn't have to worry about finding it. It's here in my library. So if you wanted to upload a new graphic, you can by just hitting the upload a new graphic button and just pulling it from your computer. But in this case, I have them already saved. So I've got potato. There he is. Beautiful. I've got little bub. Let me pull him again. We're doing insert graphic and I'm looking for a little bub. There he is. Oh, beautiful. And then princess monster truck. Let me see if I still have her. Oops, not rich content editor. I would like to insert a graphic. I've got her somewhere. Ah, there she is. Beautiful, all of them, beautiful cats. All right, so we are ready to go. This is our survey and I wanna test it out. So how do we do that? Oh, actually one more thing before we test it out. If you want to make questions in your survey mandatory, meaning the person cannot skip them because you really want the information. For example, this one right here with the name, email address, et cetera. Like you need to know who wants to adopt the cats, right? So if I go to the left-hand side here, all of the questions have the option to add requirements. So if I toggle this on, you're gonna see an option to force a response or to request a response. So force response is, you'll see a little star right here. Basically, if somebody tries to submit their survey or progress through the survey and they skip that question, Qualtrics is gonna say, uh-uh, you can't, you have to answer this question before you move on. So that's what that one is. Request response is a little politer. If they try to move on to the survey and they haven't answered it, Qualtrics will say, hey, do you want to maybe fill out this question before you move on? So it's a little different, um, but they kind of get the same point across. So any questions that you want to make mandatory, again, and you just select them here and make sure that they're highlighted with that blue box. And you're going to move on to response requirements, add requirements and a force response. And you'll see those little icons of the stars in the corner that just indicate to you that these are mandatory questions, all right? So let's move on. I've created this survey, it is perfect, I think, but I want someone else to test it for me to make sure that it works. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna hit the preview button right there. And what that's gonna do is it's going to give you a preview, as it says, it is so aptly called, of what your survey is going to look like on a desktop on the left-hand side and what it's going to look like on somebody's phone or their smartphone on the right, which I think is really useful because the formatting is always a little different. And depending on the question types you use, they may look a little different on a phone. So just something to be mindful of. I always recommend previewing a survey. If you want other people to test this survey, all you have to do is copy that whole link in your browser and just send it to somebody and say, please test this. It's a preview survey. So 
it's not going to be saved as real data responses when you go and look up the results of your survey. There's going to be a little note that says that this was a preview, so you know that you can delete those later. They're not actually part of your survey. So you can test this all you want. Remember, these questions here were mandatory. So if I try to move on, Qualtrics doesn't let me. It's giving me this thing like, please answer the question. So I'm just going to kind of... Oh, well, I'm actually just going to skip validation here because if I do that, it's going to say, oh, hey, this isn't a real email address. So one quick thing is if you are going through a survey multiple times to test it, you can go here into tools and actually ignore the validation if you want to, just to kind of quickly go through your survey over and over. Um, in this case, let me just delete those and then I think it will let me skip. Yeah, let me restart the survey. There we go. Well, it doesn't want me to ignore it, so that's fine. We'll just do it for real. And then I'll just do my email. Hopefully it takes that. Do you have any pets in your home? We wanted to test that out. I'm going to put yes. And we can see that our follow-up question did appear. So that's important to test too. You always want to make sure that you are testing your logic. I'm going to say I got a cat and I want to make sure I can pick more than one. Perfect. It's working exactly how I like. And I'm going to adopt, I think I'm going to adopt potato. And there we go. Does my survey work? Yes. Thank you for your time. The response has been recorded. Perfect. So now what do you do? Let's say you had a colleague test it. It's working fine. If you want to send this out to everybody now, you have to hit the publish button right here in the top right. So I'm going to hit publish and Qualtrics is going to do a quick little survey of my survey and tell me what it thinks of it. And you don't have to do Qualtrics recommendations, but a lot of times they have really good ones. So you can always view it and take a look at what they recommend. So in this case, they wanna enable bot protection. I could do that if I wanted, um, but it's giving me, you know, just some advice about my survey and if I wanna change things. And in this case, I'm okay with it. It's just a test. So I'm gonna move on and publish it. And as a result, Qualtrics is going to give me this wonderful survey link, which is the real one that I can send out to everybody I want. And I can just copy it here and send it out via email, post it on a website, whatever I need to do. It is likely that you will not remember this by heart, and that's fine because if you forget it, you can always go here to your distributions tab. It's gonna take a second to think. And you can pull that survey link anytime under anonymous link, and there it is. And you can pull it up whenever you want. If you make changes to your survey after the fact, the survey link will still be the same. Although if you do make changes to your survey after you publish it, you need to hit the publish link once again, just to make sure that those changes appear for the end user taking your survey, okay? You also notice there are a few other ways that you can distribute your survey. You can do it via email through Qualtrics, which some people have done. If you need to track who is responding to your survey, you can do personal links. Uh, this is a little more advanced and takes a little more time. I can't go into it too much right now, but if you're interested, feel free to email me. But essentially, you'll need a list of people in advance and an Excel sheet with their names and emails in order to create personal links to them so that you'd be able to track within Qualtrics who answered the survey and who hasn't. Um, text messages do require, that requires, I believe, uh, some funding in order to, to pay for the SMS fees. So not a lot of people do that, but although if you have questions about it, feel free to reach out. Um, social media is one option. And then there are a lot of people who use QR codes and find them handy. Um, I'm going to click that really quickly. If you're giving a PowerPoint presentation, for, an exa for example, and you want people to fill out a survey about how your presentation was, you can just copy this QR code, slap it in your slides and just like throw it up on a screen and everybody can scan it with their phones and be able to easily go to the survey rather than giving them this giant link on a screen that nobody's gonna really be able to type in easily anyway. So a QR code, super handy, highly recommend it for that type of use case. So 
when you've had your survey out in the wild for however long and you want to actually see how people responded, I'm going to go to a different survey where I actually have results. Let's go to, actually, let me go to general knowledge. All right, so I'm pulling up a survey that has had tons of responses. And there are two ways that you can pull up how people have responded to your survey. So one is data and analysis. And data and analysis is great for pulling the raw data of your survey. So let me give Qualtrics a minute to think. Depending on how many responses you have, it may take a few seconds for Qualtrics to kind of populate it all. And this one has quite a few. So I just want to has 179. So let's give it a second to think because I want to show you what all of the results look like. But data analysis is going to give you a table on the screen when it finally populates of how everybody responded. And each line item is actually one answer from a person, okay? And this view, when it does pop up on the screen, I personally do not find it to be the most helpful. You're kind of limited to, you know, the size of your screen and things like that. So usually what I recommend people do is export the raw data into something like Excel or even there's SPSS. So, oh, there we go. So this is the view that you'll see when all of the data finally populates and Qualtrics has a second to think. And this doesn't really help me very much. Um, I like to export the data, like I said. So you'll see an export and import button and I'm gonna hit export data. And Qualtrics is gonna give me a few options. So I've got CSV, Excel, SPSS, Google Drive. I've got Tableau, oh, that's new. I hadn't seen that one yet. So there's a few options here to download your data. I'm gonna do a CSV file. It's real simple and just hit download. And it's gonna take a couple seconds. But once it's ready to go, you can download it and it's going to open up in Excel. Actually, I'm going to share that with you. Give me one second to share my, uh, do a new share of the Excel. All right. So now you should be seeing the Excel file. And there's going to be a lot of data here that you probably don't need, but it's good to know what it is anyway. Um, you know, you've got things like start date and end date of the survey. One thing that I feel is super important is column C, which is called status. And this tells you when a survey is was tested in preview mode. And anything that does not say survey preview is actual data from a person who took your survey. So this is really important in terms of if you just, if you just want to delete the preview data, you can do that. All right. Um, and then you're going to get a lot of info here about like maybe how long it took somebody in seconds to finish a survey. That could be useful. Um, but what I am looking for is actually where the columns start with Q1. These are actually the exact answers that people selected in your survey. And this is the raw data that you can analyze however you need to of how exactly how people answered. Each line item, it, again, each line is a singular survey response. So that is one way to, to, to pull the data from the survey. Uh, let me stop my share really quick and go back into Qualtrics. We are gonna share Chrome. There we go. So we're back into Qualtrics. Let me close that out. The other option you have is to actually go into results. So the results tab shows an overview of how everyone answered. And it gives you some very basic visualizations of the overall way that people responded to your question. So I've got for this question here on the left, this is how everybody answered. And it's got color codes and it's great. If I click on it, I can change these visualizations to something like a bar chart if I thought that was handier or anything else like a line chart. These are really basic visualizations again, but they could be helpful if you, for example, wanted to share a, a quick report with colleagues about qu your Qualtrics survey. So I can view all of these visualizations on the left-hand side just by clicking the question. And then when I'm ready to share it, I can hit the share report button and I have a few options. I can do a PDF, a Word, a PowerPoint or a CSV. 
Um, I can also do a public report, which I think is really great if you've got a survey open for a really long time and people keep asking you, what are the results of the survey? Can you give us a status update? You can actually share this link with them and they can just look at the results in real time and they, they can't edit the results or really access your Qualtrics account. It's just in a browser, it opens and just shows them the visualizations and that's it. And it's a really great way so you don't have to feel like you're the bottleneck of, of having all of the results. And you can even put a password protection on it so not everybody can see the survey results. And there's also an option to schedule report emails. So if I wanted to, if I had the survey open for like six months and I wanted to have a, a status report every month about how things are going with the survey results, I can just set up an email to, you know, run whenever I, I indicate, you know, add a subject line information and then the type of attachment that Qualtrics would send to everybody uh, so that they're aware of what's going on with the survey. So those are a couple of ways that you could take advantage of reporting and doing kind of the simple visualizations in Qualtrics. Uh, that is the basics of Qualtrics in a nutshell. I'm actually going to look at the chat here just to see if I've got any questions. So does the Wild Cornell Medicine logo automatically pop up when you're creating a survey using your login? So Ariane, thank you so much for that question. So yes, the Qualtrics account that you have with Wild Cornell does include the Wild Cornell Medicine logo. There is a way that you can change it. So if you wanted maybe your own department logo. Let me go back out of here. Really quick, it's just thinking. Let me go back here and we'll go into my cat adoption survey. So there is a little mini menu on the left-hand side and there's one that looks like a paint roller and it is called look and feel. And if I go in there, there are some default designs or, or, the, or branding that is included in your Qualtrics account that includes the logo at the top. If you did want to change it, you would just have to uh, use a blank and you can add a logo or any, you know, if you want to choose your department logo, for example, you can add that to the top instead of the main Wild Cornell one. And so you would change it here and just hit save. You'll see that there's an option here for logo that will... Um, that will appear, it won't be shaded out once you uh, un deselect the static themes there. Let me see, how do you adjust the line spacing in the text graphic question type and in the end of the survey box? Okay, so two part question, let me go back into my survey. So if you want to adjust the the graphic, so you can you can change the graphic size to kind of change to have a little better spacing. I didn't really really size these well enough for the purposes of the demonstration. So you can change the graphic size so it just looks a little bit uh, nicer in terms of formatting. And then as far as the end of survey box, so let me go back into this. So this here, end of survey. So Qualtrics has a default fault message at the end of every survey. You can change it though. If you click on it, you'll see an option here that says default. And if I click on that, you can create a custom one. So what that's going to do is you will be taken to, you'll have a library that saves messages that you create over time. But if you're new to Qualtrics, you'll just see something that says new message. And you can just type in a, a message here at the end of the survey. So if you had some type of survey and wanted to tell people afterward, you know, oh, we'll be in touch by X date about the results of the survey, right? You can just type that in here and then hit save and that will be applied to your survey anytime somebody finishes taking it and they submit it. Are there any other questions that I can help with for Qualtrics? I know we've got a minute. Oh, when you're in the rich text editor. Oh, okay. So let me go to something with rich text. I'll go to the very top. 
So in terms of line spacing, I mean, it's very similar to, to Word. I mean, you just type and create lines as, as you go. So I can just put more information here and just like format it how I need to in terms of the spacing. So it's it's just like Word, essentially. And you can format it however you need to and make it work the way that you need to. There's also some options here like, like bullets so that you can make it look a little nicer and more organized and you can add links and things like that. If you want to end your survey in 30 days, how do you do that? Ah, very good question. So I'm going to go to survey options. It's this little icon here that looks like the little toggle bar. And if you have a survey that's open for a lengthy amount of time, and let's say it ends at midnight, like on a certain date, you don't want to be up at midnight turning off your survey. So there is an option here for responses. And if you scroll down a little bit, you can, where are you? There we go. Survey availability right here. So you can set an end date where the survey will automatically close. So I can set a specific start and end date right here. I can edit it to be, let's say it closes December 31st at, I could pick a time, 3.45 a.m., very random. I don't have to be up at 3.45 a.m. on December 31st. Good for me. And I can save the changes. And if somebody tries to take that survey at 3.46 a.m. on December 31st, they'll be blocked from taking it. Qualtrics has a message that says, sorry, the survey has expired and they cannot take it anymore. Uh, can you insert a scheduling tool such as Calendly in your survey? Oh, that's a really good question. So unfortunately, you cannot insert a tool like Calendly in your survey. But if you have questions about doing scheduling in Qualtrics, feel free to email me and I might be able to help you out with uh, what you're trying to do. How do you add your QR code to a flyer? If your survey changes, does the QR code change? So any changes you make to your survey, the link doesn't change and the QR code doesn't change. So that's important to note. Uh, let me go back into the distributions and I'm going to hit those. There's a QR code, right? All you have to do is download it. So you're going to download it. It saves, a, I believe, as a PNG file or JPEG. And you just take that and slap it into your flyer and it'll work perfectly. Just make sure it's like a, a pretty decent size so people can scan it easily on their phones. So I know we're a little over time. I thank you for your patience. Um, if you have additional questions, please, again, I'm going to send you a follow-up email. Happy to answer your questions if you just want to hit reply back to me. And hopefully I can help you with whatever use case you might have for Qualtrics. But I really appreciate you taking some time to learn more about the survey tool. I hope this has helped you you know, get an idea of how to use Qualtrics and give you a place to start when you're creating your own surveys. And again, I'm going to have a second session next week about how to specifically add scoring to your Qualtrics survey. So now that maybe you have a little knowledge of how to create your survey, you might want to learn how to add the scoring option as well. So thank you again. Really appreciate you joining me. And I'll have a follow-up email for you later today with some hopefully handy tips of how to start your own survey. So thank you so much and have a great rest of the day. Thanks, guys.